Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel again. In today's video, we are going to look at Neomat. Neomat is an email client from the terminal. Yes, from the terminal. And I'm going to install this on i3. Let's get going. So here we go. We are now on i3 on my main machine here. I reinstalled actually a few days ago my whole installation with i3 and I'm set up now to work with this window manager, which I really love. And I started to work with Matt already some weeks ago and I was intrigued because I never used it before. And at the beginning it felt a little bit strange, but I have to say with time, I really got used to it and I really started to enjoy working with the emails from the terminal. So I thought I might share this with you guys. It's just a small program, but it's probably worth for some of you. And if you wanna have fun and try to test it out, I'm curious to know what you think about it. Anyway, let's get going. And the first thing we need to do is, of course, to install the program. So we have two programs here. We have MUT and NeoMUT. Well, NeoMUT is the newer version and it offers more features. And that's the one I recommend you to install. And that's the one we are going to install in this video. So to install it, we are just going to type in sudo pacman-s and then NeoMUT. And hit enter. Enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. There you go. Let's clean up the terminal. Now, NeoMAT or MAT are looking for the configuration file called matrc into several directories. One of these could be the .mat directory. So I'm going to create actually the matrc file in the .mat directory in my home directory. So first I'm going to create the .mat directory in my home directory by typing in mkdir and then .mat. Any enter. Let's type in ls-a to display all the content. And we have here our .mat directory. So everything looks good. We can proceed now by creating the matrc file. So to do this, we can type in sudo vim and then .mat slash matrc and hit enter. Now let's go to workspace number two here. And I have opened my website with a sample configuration file. So what I did here, I created a test email address on my server just to test this out. My IMAP server is a standard IMAP server. There is nothing special about it. So this configuration should actually work with several IMAP servers. So what we can do, we can copy the text and switch back to workspace number one. And we can paste in this content. And let's save the file. And let's go through what this file does. So let's go to the top. So the first section here, we have our IMAP settings. So the first parameter set folder is going to tell basically the system what is the server name of your IMAP connection. So we'll put this in this way, IMAPs, because we want to have a secure server, and then the server name followed by the port. Then we have the IMAP user, which is going to be the username. So basically the email address in my case. This depends also on your IMAP server. Sometimes it's just a name or sometimes it's the whole email address. Then we have set IMAP pass for the password. And then we have also IMAP check subscribed. That means Neomat is going to check for the mailboxes on your server. And with the second option here, list subscribed, is going to list all those mailboxes. We have also a timeout option. This is up to you to change this if you want to. We have also mail check, which is defined in seconds. We have IMAP keep alive to keep the connection open. Same also goes to unset IMAP passive so that the connection is established automatically. If your server supports IMAP idle, you can uncomment this line. In my case, I have to let it commented because my server does not support IMAP idle. But if yours does, you can uncheck this and it's actually better because IMAP idle is basically offering also push notifications. Then set from parameter is going to tell Neomat basically from which address you're sending your email from. And we have to set this. And the real name is actually the name that people are going to see when you send your email. So that's all about the race for the IMAP. The next session is about SMTP, so the server where you send mail from. The first parameter set SMTP URL is going to set the server address and the username. So this depends really on your server. Normally, you can type in, in here SMTPS for the secure server, but in my case, it did not work. So now I have to use SMTP with 587 and then specify the SSL afterwards. So you have to test this out how it works for your server. But basically here, it's SMTP and then the username followed by the address of the server and the port, then the SNTP password. And then in my case, I had to define the SSL start TTLS as yes to make this secure. As I said, this might vary to your server, so you might have to change this accordingly. 
Then the next section we have the mailboxes. So the spool file basically is telling the system which mailbox is going to be checked for incoming mail. And that's of course the inbox. The mailboxes parameter is going to tell the system which mailboxes to show. The set record is going to tell the system which mailbox is going to be stored for sent emails. In this case, because I want my sent emails to be stored on the server into the sent mailbox, I have to put this in this order, plus inbox.send. The same goes for drafts, which is called set postponed. And I could also put here actually a set trash and inbox trash if I want to have those deleted emails on the server as well. Now, normally Neomat or Matt are going to open the editor you have installed in your system to edit emails. But if you have more than one, you can select the one you want to use here by default. So in my case, I just put here set editor Vim because I want to use Vim to edit my emails. Now for display sidebar, of course, we have only two parameters here, sidebar visible, yes or no. In this case, it's visible. And the sidebar width in this case is 20. You can adjust this, of course, accordingly. Now we have also two other options here. One is for the H cache. And it says here in the comment, if H cache is a folder, Matt or Neomat will create the subcache folder for each account, which may speed things up. So we can check actually if we have this folder available or not. If not, we can create it. And the same goes also for the message cache directory that will also speed things up, like searching message bodies, for example. And I see there is a small error here. Let me delete this double quotes. There you go. And then we have also the next section is about the sidebar navigation. So we basically have some key bindings to navigate through your mailboxes. So CP goes to the previous mailbox, CN goes to the next mailbox, CI opens the mailbox, and CB toggles the visibility of the sidebar. The last section I have here is about theming. So basically it's going to sell Neomat or Matt to source for this theme for the customization. However, this theme is not yet installed. We will install this a little bit later. But because I don't have this theme yet installed in the system, I'm going to comment this line. Otherwise, it's going to produce an error when we start Neomat the first time. We're going to change this later in the video. Now, let's save the file and open up a new terminal so that we can create the mat directory into the .cache directory. So let me pull up the terminal here. And we'll type in mkdir and then .cache slash mat any enter. There you go. We can close this up and we can again save and quit Vim. And before we proceed, actually, we can check to who this file belongs. Let's type in ls-al.mat and hit enter. So you can see the matrc file belongs to the root user. I want to change this because I don't want to type sudo the whole time. So I will type in sudo chon for changing ownership, then hermano, so my username, colon my group. And then dot mat, and then mat rc, any enter. Enter the sudo password. And now, if you list again the content, you will see the mat rc belongs to me. So I go back now to the mat rc file, change my passwords, and I'll meet you back here in a second. So there you go, I changed my passwords. Now, what I'm going to do is I go to the third workspace in my system. I have already an email icon there because this is going to be reserved for this. And I'll open up a new terminal. And I'll type in now Neomat, any tenter. And here we have Neomat. So it looks a little bit flat right now because it doesn't have any colors or anything. There is only one mail in here. You can see it's on the top. This is a testing mail I sent to myself just to test if everything works fine. So what we do here, we can actually hit enter and see the content of the mail, basically. So this is a test. That's fine. So we can read email. The server connects correctly. So let's go back by hitting I here, so exit basically, and let's try to send an email. Let's type M, and we have two address here down there. So what we can do now, we can send actually an email. So I will send it actually to my main address, and I enter here. Then for the subject, I'm going to put in here, testing, Neomat, and it enter. Now, because I have Vim set as an editor, I'm opened up already in Vim and I can type in my message. So I can type in, for example, this mail is a test for Neomat. And that's it. So we can save this file like we normally would. Now the file is ready to send. So we can hit Y here to send. Let's see if it sends the mail. And there you go. It says mail sent. Now let's have a look actually if the mail was sent correctly on the server. Let's go down to the inbox sent. So for that, we'll press Control-N, go down to the last inbox here, 
and then hit Control i to open the mailbox. And there you go, we have here testing Neomat. So if I hit enter here, I can see this is the mail I just sent. And I see now on my computer here, I received it on my main address. So I go back to my inbox here with Control p and then Control i to open the mailbox. And what about if we want to send something with an attachment? Is that even possible? Yes, it is. Let's try it again. So let's type in M, new email. So I'll type in again my address. And as a subject, I will type in, in here, photo, any tenter. Now I can type in my message. This is a photo. And then save the file. And we can see there on top on our menus, there is a A for attach file. So let's hit A here. And as you can see, if you know the path of the file, you can type it in here, but I don't. So I'll type in the question mark. Now it's asking me, where do you want to actually look for the file? I think I do have actually some files in the pictures folder. So let's go there and hit enter. And here I have my two wallpapers. So I will select the last one and hit enter. So the attachment is now there. And now I can hit Y to send. And the mail was sent correctly. So let's go back again to the sent mailbox and I can see already the photo arrived in my other address here on my computer. But let me go down to the sent email and open the mailbox. And you can see the mail is there so we can actually open up this email. And you can see on the top menu we have V for view attachment. So if I hit V on my keyboard, it shows the attachment. And if I go to it and hit enter, it's going to open up. And that's the wallpaper here on the side. It kind of blends into the background, but that's the photo I'm using. And that's actually the attachment. So I can close this up. And now I can exit by typing Q and exiting again by hitting I and we are back in the sent mailbox. So I go back to the inbox, open the mailbox and there you go. Now let's try to customize MUT. Let me quit out of the program by hitting Q and I go back to Firefox and I have already a page here open. Here there is a selection of themes you can choose from for matte. So we have several ones, matte color, solarized dark, light, 256 and 16, these are the colors. So what this nice project is doing is actually basically giving us the opportunity to download those themes and then put them in the matte RC file so that our matte program looks a little bit nicer. So let's download these. So let's click on clone or download. And I'm just going to save the file. There you go. Now I go back to my terminal and let's list the content. So we'll type in CD and downloads to go to the downloads directory. And we have here the zip file. So right now I don't have any unzipping utility installed. So I need to install that first. We'll type in sudo pacman s and then unzip and hit enter. Enter my sudo password and that's installed. There you go. So now we can unzip this zip file by typing in unzip and then mut and with the tab key auto complete and hit enter. There you go. Let's type in again ls and we have there our directory. So let's go in there. Let's type in cd and then mut color solarized master and hit enter and list the files. So here we have our files available. So you remember in the configuration file, we had already one theme available there. So let's actually go back there one second. So let's type in, in here vim dot mut and then mut rc and hit enter. And let's see the one we actually have here is 256, dark 256. Okay, so let's open up here a new terminal and let's type in cd and then downloads. And I go again into the master directory, mut colors and list the content and there we have our 256 mat rc so to copy that file in our mat directory we will type in cp and then mat color solarized dark 256 mat rc and we're going to copy this into their home directory and then slash dot mat and hit enter there you go we can close this terminal up and we need to change actually the path because this one here is not correct so let me go in here and this is actually dot mat. There you go. And we can also uncomment this line by deleting the hashtag. And then we can save the file and exit Vim. Now let's type in again neomat and hit enter. And you can see the colors are already different. Now let's enter the email here by hitting enter. You can see also the colors are different. It's easier to read because the colors are popping up and the yellow and the shade of gray makes everything a little bit easier on the eyes. 
So let's go back to the mailbox. And one thing also to keep in mind is that you can actually define these mails also as important by hitting capital F. You can see we have an exclamation mark there. And now let me also send one email from my main address to this address to see how it looks like. So there you go, we get a notification here, new mail is in this mailbox. And when we move down here, you see also the important mail is marked now as red. It's always easier than to see. We can open up the new mail. And this is my response here, good test. So we can go back. Now, if we need to reply to one email, we can type R. And the two address is the same, so I can hit enter here. The subject is also the same, so we can hit enter. And we can include the message in the reply, let's say yes, so I just hit enter. And now we can type in our response here. So let's say we can type in thanks. And then we can save the file. And we can send it by hitting Y. And there you go, the file is now sent. So this is a very simple example on how to use Neomat. I really like it. It's really fun to use emails like this. In the beginning, it was a strange feeling, but once you get the hang of it, it's really fun and it's also very quick. So you can try it out if you like and let me know what you think about it. There you go. This is how you can install Neomat. I really like Neomat on a window manager, especially it's really practical and it's really fast and fun to use. Give it a try if you like to and let me know what you think about it. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video guys and I'll see you soon in the next one.